Well, thank you very much. Just picking up on your uh, last point on on coordination before I open to the to the audience. Um, a number of speakers have mentioned that the uh, that social dialogue is a is a very important aspect of how we arrive at, at solutions. So the question is, um, what is it that uh, can be done uh, to ensure that the space for that dialogue to occur is there during um, a crisis situation? Because my sense is that in that in that um, moment where everybody is in a panic mode, it's very difficult to have a sensible um, you know discussion. What can we learn from the from the crisis to prepare? Uh, for that sort of dialogue, so that the right kinds of policies and and um, you know responses uh, are actually given effect to in a timeless manner. That's mainly for yes, Peter. Yeah, well, I I think that's very important. And when we saw a figure um, in one of the presentations that uh, of the 77 countries surveyed, uh, 14 had formal. Um, agreements on national sector uh, or a sector level. So it, it is very low. Um, uh, what is good to see, I think, is that it includes, um, you know, the Scandinavian countries, Germany, and, and a few others that are well known, but also uh, some important developing countries like Brazil. Uh, your own country of South Africa, uh, in fact, has established, I believe, good uh, practices of, of social uh, dialogue. Um, Unfortunately, what we're seeing is that in, in some cases, though, those, uh, those processes are actually being undermined. Uh, there are countries in Eastern Europe, for example, that, uh, that recently have uh, uh, dismantled uh, national level bargaining, which allows for the kind of uh, you know, discussion of, uh, of the, 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 broad, the, the big policy trade-offs that, that should take place. So I, th I think that is, that is a real challenge. I think what, we, we, what you tend to see is where, where the uh, processes for so social dialogue are working, delivering results, um, is where, where they were already well, well established. Uh, where workers are well organized, where, where freedom of association is, is fully respected, which is obviously not the case in, um, in many countries, and, um, and a certain level of um, uh, negotiation on a national level, give and take, that, um, that already exists. So th this is maybe a, um, a longer-term challenge. You know, the point is, is made in this document and others that it's, it's difficult to put in place um, all the policy responses on a, on a, on a short term. So I think uh, that, that's something, uh, I know it's part of the ILO mandates to, uh, mandate to promote that. Um, I think it's probably newer for the World Bank to actually get involved in that. And it was certainly something we would very much encourage if we're make, to make headway and to uh, put in place uh, uh, proper mechanisms to respond when the when the next crisis hits. Hopefully, it won't, but uh, probably it will at some point. 